Hi, this is Tony for Headbangers India, and I'm sitting here with Lars Nachtraker, Koen Vuurdichter, from the band Heidevolk. Heidevolk. Hi guys, welcome. Thank you for this interview. Um, your new album was released last month. Um, how well was it received? Was it well received? Yeah, uh, really good actually. Uh, it was of course for us, uh, well for me as a new member. I've been with the band for now uh, for around uh, two, two and a half years maybe. So this is my first album that I worked on together with the band. And uh, so I didn't know what to expect exactly. I knew that the last album was pretty successful. The band did pretty well. So I had good hopes, but uh, yeah, if I look at the response, it's been pretty good actually. Uh, yeah. A lot of people seem to like it. We actually uh, uh, also uh, broke the uh, album charts in Belgium for 81st position. Something like that, yeah. So that's, that's always good. Is that a new record for you guys in Belgium? In Belgium, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, most of your songs are Dutch, um, when you are in, let's say, the UK or in Germany, do you sing in Dutch or do you have a different set list just for when no, you guys are abroad? We, we uh, uh, always sing in Dutch, uh, we have like two English songs uh, in our repertoire, but uh, no, we, uh, we just uh, uh, sing in Dutch. It is what we do, yeah. yeah. The whole gimmick, the whole thing is that we sing in Dutch because it's about uh, Gelderland, uh, the region where the band is from, and all the heritage and the myths and culture, yeah. and the Veluwe. Uh, that's what we sing about, so it has to be in Dutch. And those two songs that he talked about in English, uh, they all have a, a purpose. Yeah. It's not uh, that we sing them in English because we hey, let's do a song in English. They, they fit into the concept of that particular song. So uh, on the new album we have uh, Wolf in My Heart, that's the only complete English song. Yeah. But that song is about uh, like the alliance. It's the whole concept of the album is about uh, tribes uh, moving over to yeah. Britain and uh, clashing with the Celts and other tribes that are there after the retrieval of the Roman Empire. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Wolf in My Heart is uh, based on the uh, uh, English legends, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have to ask Rowan. Rowan, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's his lyrics, but it's all it fits all in the concept. And uh, on the last album, we also had uh, uh, Finland, and that was the, the other English song. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we wrote that basically for uh, uh, I think a tribute to the tribute. to the American fans, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because the band toured there in 2015 before yeah. I joined the band. And they made a promise back then uh, to return and also uh, make another tribute to them by creating a song. And that, yeah. that's the song Finland. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So it's not just, uh, so it always originates from yeah. some idea. There's a very good reason if it's a different language. Yeah. So it's also possible that maybe next album is going to be maybe a German song. French. Who knows? You never know. I don't think that it's probably not likely <laughs> to happen. But if it's if it fits in the concept, then you know. But still, Heidevolk is about singing Dutch. Yeah. But how Always. how does it feel to have uh, foreign? Uh, I'm say foreign, but uh, English people or something singing up, trying to sing along with the songs. Well, that's. Uh, I think that's um, admirable. I think um, they, they just try and. Uh, it might not be uh, uh, fluent or uh, necessarily correct, but at least they just give it a shot. And um, yeah, and our fans in like Brazil, everywhere, yeah, uh, it's, uh, they just uh, they just just know the lyrics. In some countries, it's more obvious than in other countries. But basically, all the countries that we play, uh, there's always a part of the audience that's singing all the lyrics, yeah. even though they don't speak the, the language. It's all phonetically. <coughs> But we also encounter like fans from that particular country, like in, uh, for example in uh, Italy. Mm -hmm. We played uh, yeah. Foschfest. Yeah. And we we met a fan there. And he, uh, he was studying Dutch language yeah. because of Eidevolk. Yes. So we could cool. sing all the lyrics and understand what we were singing about. Yeah. That is cool. And that's really the biggest compliment you can get, basically, for us. It's just 
like uh, much Dutch people learn German because of Rammstein. So now, yeah, yeah, yeah Italian yeah. people are learning Dutch yeah. because of Heidefeld. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Um, so, what can you tell us about this tour with uh, Corby Um Well, it's been fun so far. <laughs> And um, we'll be touring uh, until the 11th of March. Basically, yes. Yeah. So yeah, we just started the tour. Yeah. So this is show number four, I believe. It's not, it doesn't say that, right? Yeah. It's the fourth show. Yeah. So we're still um, finding our way, basically. Yeah. Some uh, startup. Uh, well, probably. We're slow starters. Yeah. <laughs> slow starters. <laughs> Keep it there. Yeah, yeah we always need some time to get the, the show together and yeah. become Excuse a machine me. on stage. So this is uh, we're getting there slowly. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's been a fun tour. Yeah, we know the guys from Trollfest and touring before uh, Copacani as well many times before. Also this venue yeah. two years ago, I believe it was the last yeah. time. And we went to the US with our Conans. And we went, yeah, our Conans. Yeah. So it's a big yeah. group of friends. We are basically uh, everybody knows each other already, and the crew as well. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, the Corby Climbing Clue. Crew. Clue. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a Russian dude. <laughs> so, what is the craziest thing that ever happened on a tour? Uh, I don't think we're allowed to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> or what is the craziest thing uh, a fan ever uh, asked you? Or both? That's a difficult question. Yeah. A lot of stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. And we had some uh, fans uh, wanted, uh, came to the signing session and asked us to sign certain parts of their body, which was okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's not really crazy. No. Uh, it, happens, it just happens it every just now happens. and then. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's not really a crazy um, tour story, basically. That, um, like I said, the, there's almost every night. Especially this lineup with uh, Copa Carmi and Arcona and all the mixed cultures and it's all partying music basically, yeah. sort of, more or less. In the folk metal scene there's always a lot of stuff going on backstage and partying with strange people and <laughs> circus. And the, 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 <laughs> the bus is, uh, it was a big club last night. Yeah, last night was great. Two parties and one bus. Downstairs and upstairs. So, yeah, that's it. Too but many stories. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's fun. It was like really one thing that. No, I can't name one thing that's like wow. That that was so weird. No, I, there, there are a lot of stories. There are crazy stories like our last U, uh, U.S. tour, of course. That's more like dangerous situations that we oh, yeah, encountered. Yeah. Not really fun stories, but more like, whoa, what happened? Yeah. Whatever you so want to share. Bus broke down in the desert. Yeah, the bus, well, that's, that's the beginning of the story. That's the the bus of, started yeah. to break down every yeah. 40 minutes or so. Yeah. And it was an American tour bus uh, with Arcona and Heidevolk. Yeah. Just the two bands. And uh, a driver who was 76 years old. Yeah. American driver. Very good guy. Very good guy. But the bus, the maintenance wasn't really good I think so we were heading to Las Vegas uh, in the desert and uh, the bus broke down every 40 minutes so the old guy had to go outside to fix the bus every 40 minutes no. 76 years old in the scorching heat in the, Neva it's, in it's the Nevada summer. desert and uh, 45 degrees we didn't have any drinking water no the water was uh, out so we had two managers got to uh, to arrange that so we were <laughs> 20 people in a bus in the middle of the desert yeah. and it broke Oh, of course, the, 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 the airco, uh, air conditioning uh, failed as well. Yeah, with so no water. That, that, was, no, the, that, that was, was the beginning of the, of the, the story. Yeah. yeah. So that happened and eventually we had to... Uh, we, 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 we went to the garage with the bus. Yeah, we went to the garage and then it turned out that the, the, the bus, uh, they couldn't fix it anymore. No, oh. so and it caused fire. No, that's later. That, that's the second <laughs> later. That's okay. on, on the way to Los Angeles. Oh wait, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the day yeah. after. Okay, that's the day same after. Bus. <laughs> same bus. But we were we called a fan. We phoned a fan yeah. uh, if he could help us out from Las Vegas uh, because we had nobody to get us to the show and we were like two hours away from showtime basically yeah. or something. Yeah. So we phoned the, the the fan and 
and uh, he uh, rings his mother <laughs> to pick up to pick us up at the garage and bring us to the venue. That was kind of crazy. Yeah. But then the next day, we had the same bus that was like sort of fixed for now. Yeah. We had it because we had a flat t flat tire. Yeah. As well. yeah. <laughs> it exploded basically in the summer. Yeah, everything went wrong. Everything went wrong for one thing to another. <laughs> okay. And the, the next day we were heading, we were driving again. Yeah, we were going filled. to the to the company to get a different bus in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah and, and we drove uh, uh, into the uh, fenced area of the the company. Not before that we were on the ramp. Oh, that was scary as well. We almost died. Yeah, that was like <laughs> a, uh, uh, like a bridge thing with a uh, with a curb in it, and it was. Uh, uh, like slanted, about 40, 50 meters high, like yeah. a real American. But because our road. our bus couldn't drive really fast, we were like, uh, and it broke down as well on the on the ramp. Yes, <laughs> and we were scared it was going to topple. Yeah, well, yeah, we were all sitting uh, like in the Offset, seated, seated yeah. area, and the, we felt the bus go like this, <laughs> and over there was like 40, 50 meters depth. Yeah, basically, it was leaning so over. Know, <laughs> Because of the blown tire, it was leaning over as well in that direction. So you guys all went to the all went yes. the bus, <laughs> and then we somehow we managed to yeah to make the, to make it to the company roll, roll out to the company, and that's where we all got out. And at that same moment, the bus caught fire. Yeah. Wow. But there was still a couple of people in the bus, but luckily we were at the garage, so yeah. immediately people with fire extinguishers yeah. and stuff. That was that, that uh, could have been some uh, adventure. Could, could could have been worse. Yeah, yeah, a lot worse. So yeah, it sounds like a nice tour. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was fun. A nice two days. Yeah, those uh, two days yeah. were uh, uh, exciting. <laughs> yeah. Are there any plans after this tour to do another solo tour or a headline tour? Plans? Yes. <laughs> well, we can't say anything about it yet because there are no uh, real dates there are no, no, no real plans yet. but we were we are we have been talking about it for yeah. for many times already so i think it's like we want to do it we want to do it and it's likely to happen yeah. in the next year or two i think so yeah like a big high folk tour sounds good how and when i don't know <laughs> but uh, we, we really want to make it happen make it happen yep uh do you guys play video games um uh, not so much anymore but no no, 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 but uh, I do still play. Uh, yeah, my favorites are uh, like Bioshock and uh, Fallout. I usually uh, only play the, the single player stories because um, I don't have that much time to get good at gaming. So when I play, uh, when I try the, the, the multiplayer online thing, uh, I get my ass kicked. Uh, and yeah. So I, I finished the single player campaign and then uh, maybe uh, two years later I'll repeat that process again, choose a different storyline and stuff. Yep. So mostly yeah, just good stories, that's uh, my yeah. main thing. That's what I like to do. Yeah, it's also Fallout series, uh, yeah. Metal, Gear, Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I want to. Uh, haven't had a chance to uh, play the new Assassin's Creed yet, but uh, I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions for the uh, for the fans, or do you want to tell us, say something to the fans? Of course. Yeah. It was in India, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. You've been there? No, I haven't. <laughs> been there and I would uh, love to uh, visit uh, India. Yeah. yeah, I've been there yeah. once with my uh, the band that I also play in uh, Detonation. Uh, it was 2007, if I remember correctly. We played uh, two shows. Uh, yeah, that was amazing, amazing experience. But it's really difficult to get out there and do a tour or something. Yeah, yeah. It's almost impossible us at this moment because there's not much else in the region to book I, uh, I wouldn't know you wouldn't know no, I, would, I wouldn't know but uh, would there, there, there are a lot of countries I, uh, I still want to visit and, and play in and uh, that, that is India, our goal uh, that's what we talked about yeah. with Heidefog we really want to play everywhere yeah. at least once <laughs> yes. 
like Antarctica, <laughs> Australia, Japan. We haven't been to Japan yet. No, Just, we haven't been to Japan. It's like Metallica did with the uh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Arctic Circle gig. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> and are, do you guys want to play 70k? Um, yes. Yeah, that's uh, you want to. a touchy subject. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, um, we couldn't a couple of times. Uh, we were offered, but uh, something came in between it and didn't remember what anymore. That's uh, the last two years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Heidevolk has actually played uh, 70k before. Uh, before we were. Before we were in the band. So. Aww. Yeah. So it's on our uh, bucket list. Yeah. I heard uh, a fan downstairs and he said he had to make it in 2020 because he's not going next year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, we'll be sure to, <laughs> to keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well guys, thank you and, uh, so much for the interview. Welcome. Uh, thank you. I hope you have a great gig. Yeah, I hope so. One last word to your fans? <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks for the support and uh, we really appreciate it and uh, hope to meet you all uh, soon, somewhere, sometime. Yeah. Yeah. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. Nice and easy. Alright, thank you so much guys. Thank you. You're welcome.